Good morning, explorers. Good morning. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit different. If you know anything about our channel, then you know we like historic places. So, we've stayed in a bunch of historic places now, and we thought we would compile a list to give you guys some suggestions so that if you like historic places, you can come check them out too. Now, these places are not modern, they have Floors Creek and all that stuff, but we think they're really cool. Yeah, there's a lot of history to it. And some of them are haunted. Right. We've never seen any ghosts yet. <laughs> we haven't caught anything on camera. Well, without further ado, let's get going. The first old hotel on our list is located on Amelia Island in Fernandina Beach and is the oldest surviving hotel in the state of Florida. The Florida House Inn opened its doors in 1857 as a boarding house by David Uly. This inn has hosted famous guests such as the Vanderbilts, the DuPonts, the Carnegies, President Grant, and Laurel and Hardy, just to name a few. The hotel offers 17 guest rooms, but also includes a sitting parlor, an English style pub, a southern style restaurant, and large wraparound porches. This bed and breakfast is a fully restored two-story building with a charming decor including handmade quilts and hooked rugs. Our room was on the bottom floor and required an old style key for entry. The room included a large bed, clawfoot tub and shower, it has one bathroom, and a wardrobe. Everything you need for a comfortable stay. The outside property will take you back to another time. This affordable hotel runs between $100 and $200 a night for the 2024 year. You are in the heart of downtown Fernandina Beach and within walking distance to a lot of entertainment, including a fort, many beaches, nature trails for hiking, plenty of dining establishments, and local distilleries. Drive or walk around the oak tree lined streets for some small town fun. Check out the oldest bar in Florida. The Palace Saloon opened its doors in the late 1800s and has survived all these years. Heading west towards the city of Defuniac Springs, our next stop takes us to a 1920 structure with an interesting and somewhat questionable past. Hotel Defuniac was first built as a Masonic Lodge. It is a charming little hotel. The floors and ceiling of this building are still the original. It was transformed over the years into a boarding house, a furniture store, and a pharmacy before becoming an old hotel. The cost of the hotel is between 100 and 150 a night in the 2024 year. This 12-room hotel is said to be haunted by two children who passed here some time ago. We stayed on the bottom floor in the presidential suite. It offered a kitchenette with a small refrigerator. The side room slept three people with a bunk bed and TV. There is also a king size bed with a TV. The suite has one bathroom. On site you will find a restaurant called Cafe Nola with a Big Easy vibe. The chef and owner of the hotel named Ernie created a delicious and authentic New Orleans menu. The small town of Defuniac Springs is known for Lake Defuniac. This is a spring-fed lake and one of only two perfectly round lakes found in the world. 
The main street has a few restaurants and shops for visitors to enjoy. Appreciate the quiet and small town life. Next, we head southeast to our next stop, the Herlong Mansion Bed and Breakfast. It is located in the famous small town of Micanopy. This town is one of the oldest inland communities in the state of Florida. The house was built in 1845 as a simple cracker style pine farm home. In 1910, this home was encased in brick to ensure it would last for many more years. Over the years, it became the two-story mansion you see today. In the 1980s, this home was turned into a bed and breakfast. Inside, you will find little decorative charms as you explore the home. A free breakfast is served every morning from 8 to 9, Monday through Friday, and 8.30 to 9.30 on Saturday and Sunday, with the menus changing daily. In the afternoon, the Herlong offers fresh baked cookies and a free glass of wine or beer from a nearby brewery. It is a perfect way to spend an afternoon on the huge front porch. There are 13 perfectly designed rooms for you to choose, which also include two cottages on the property. We stayed in the Herlong Suite, which is located on the second floor. This room offers two beds, a couch, a bathroom with a shower and tub, and access to the top balcony porch. One thing to note, there is only one TV in the entire house, but they do offer Wi-Fi. This bed and breakfast costs around 200 a night for the 2024 year. Out of the 11 rooms in the house, the Azalea Suite is the only one located on the ground floor for wheelchair accessibility. Other rooms are located on the third floor. They each have a different whimsical name and are differently designed. This hotel is a perfect place to relax and just enjoy that small town life while sitting on the front porch. During the day, you can walk around the small town of Micanopy and check out all the old buildings. There is a museum, several restaurants, and many antique shops to explore. It is also worth noting that this is the town where they filmed the movie, Doc Hollywood. We spent the day looking for all the filming locations. Enjoy the quiet. Heading south, our next stop takes us to the town of Newport Ritchie and the Hacienda Hotel. This place was built in the 1920s and first opened its doors in 1927. There are over 40 rooms to enjoy. The hotel has an interesting history starting with Thomas Meegan, a silver screen leading man's brother James E. Meegan, opening a hotel for film stars of that time. It is said that the place also had a reputation for shady behavior operating as a speakeasy, a brothel, and a gambling establishment. The hotel eventually closed in the 1970s and in 1986 became an ACLF for the mentally disabled before closing its doors altogether and then sitting empty for many years. This hotel reopened again in September of 2022. There is a full service restaurant and a bar named Sasha's on the park inside. Each of the 40 rooms has been beautifully designed to offer a relaxing stay at only 125 to 200 a night for the 2024 year. Our room was a corner room on the second floor. The accommodation has a simple design with a comfortable king-size bed, armoire, TV, and a couple of chairs. We had a view of the front courtyard. The bathrooms are all designed the same with a shower, sink, and toilet. Downtown Newport Ritchie has many shops, eateries, activities, and distilleries or bars to enjoy. There is also a small lake and park to walk around just behind the hotel. A lot of small town fun is located here as the town has been attracting more and more businesses to join the area. You won't go hungry when you stay at this hotel. Our final stop, we head further south to the town of Bel Air for the Bellevue Inn. This hotel was built by Henry B. Plant in 1897. This would have been a luxury winter hotel for wealthy guests to escape the cold winters of the north. This hotel has had an interesting history including its relocation in December of 2016 after being lifted, rotated 90 degrees, and moved 375 feet east to make room for an expanding condo area. 
A good part of the hotel has been removed, but what is left is part of the original building. With all the add-ons over the years, this hotel was massive. Much of the building's history has been lost over the years as well. The hotel would have been an architectural marvel for its time. The first thing you notice while in the lobby is its lack of support columns. Henry Plant wanted the room to offer beautiful views of the outside property without columns in the way. They saved 25 panels of Tiffany glass from the original ballroom to decorate this smaller ballroom. The original could hold over a thousand people. The history room offers a small museum which includes pictures, books, a video, old menus, and a list of past guests. This list includes presidents, dukes, movie stars, and ball players. Take a QR code tour of the hotel or call and book a free tour with their local historian, Joey. We spent over two hours exploring the hotel and listening to the history of it all. The hotel has a small cafe on the premises named Maisie's Marketplace and offers sandwiches, beer, and wine. Unfortunately, due to external circumstances, they are not allowed to have a bar or restaurant on location. Our favorite part was exploring the architecture around the property which includes this beautiful grand staircase. We made our way to the fourth floor where the architect had left part of the building exposed so you could see the truss system and the heart pine that makes this hotel structure as strong as steel though it is made from wood. Our room was located on the second floor. It was one of 35 rooms available. We had rented a Junior King suite. The room came with a small refrigerator, living room, two TVs, a king-size bed, and a private bathroom. Downstairs, we grabbed a towel and checked out the fitness room before making our way to the pool. The outdoor area includes a pool, hot tub, and first come first serve cabanas. The hotel also offers free bikes to rent and ride around the property. We decided to explore the area down by the docks. We even spotted a manatee. It was a peaceful and relaxing ride around the area. This hotel runs around 200 to 400 a night for your stay in 2024. If you are looking for some more excitement in the area, Clearwater Beach is only a four mile drive away. There are a lot of things to do in that area, including restaurants, bars, a pier, and the beaches. Okay, explorers, I hope you enjoyed this list of videos that we compiled. Now, we're not saying these are the best hotels. These are just some of the places that we've checked out so far in Florida. And we definitely are going to go check out a lot more because I have a list of places I want to go. So, and as we do that, we'll compile more videos like that to give you guys suggestions on historic places that you can stay to. And a lot of them are relatively cheap. Yes. Yeah. As always, thank you for coming along with us. Keep exploring. And we'll see you on the next one.